Well, a very special edition of the Steelers podcast, as you can see, two different guests, Aaron Fox and Carter Best and Wills, join us. Uh, and that's to celebrate the good news that we've announced today, that not one, not two, but for three more seasons, uh, Aaron and Carter will be at the helm as far as the uh, Steelers are concerned. And uh, we'll start off with you, Aaron. Obviously, there was a year left on the deal, but but to extend and to extend by a couple, I think, shows how comfortable you are in Sheffield and how comfortable Tony is with your good self as well. Yeah, I mean, at the end, after the season, um, you know, we, we had our exit meetings, as we always do, and we went through some roster stuff, and, and Tony, you know, talked about an extension, and from my point of view, it, it's an absolute. It was an absolute no-brainer. Um, you know, I've I've got a 16-year-old and 11-year-old uh, children who are are going to school here. Um, they're very happy. They're very settled here. Um, so the family point of view and, and that type of security, being in a place that we like, giving them a real childhood, is very important to us. Um, which you know, and then going along with the hockey side of it, like. This is a very professional organization. Tony and the Smith family have been nothing but outstanding since the moment I landed in, in Sheffield. You know, we had the COVID year, um, and I couldn't have asked for him to manage that any better for us as a family. That that, that was a tough situation for all of us. And, he, you know, they've just been so fair. They give me all the tools to operate and, and put a, a successful team on the ice every year. Um, no excuses. At the end of every year, I, I can't look at any excuses, you know, from an ownership side and organization side that that I wasn't given the, the best opportunity to have success. And, um, you know, I, I think there's a great relationship there. There's a, a relationship, you know, from my point of view that, you know, they're fair people. They work hard. Um, you know, we put eight, nine thousand people in the building. The work gets done from their side. And I think in return, he sees, you know, the work that that we put in Carter and I on, on the daily um, and he it, I don't think he's got a lot to worry about as an owner you know what I mean and I think that's a very good relationship to have both ways um, he knows that I've got the organization's best interest at heart with all the decisions I make and you know we've been very very competitive and this is uh this was a like I said a no-brainer from from my point of view to to extend this deal and and continue to hopefully put a product on the ice that makes you know him the the organization and and the fans and city proud of. Yeah. Whilst you sit on top of that pyramid of the coaching team, Alfie, Mike, mm -hmm. and of course the gentleman uh, also joining us Carter is is a huge part of that and and the two of you work so I see it from behind the scenes. You you work so well together and and Carter's role has grown, hasn't it? And and I guess from your point of view, important that he came back for that that same period as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Carter came here with me uh five years ago. Um we've uh we've we've given him a, a new role. He's gonna take the associate coach title uh, moving forward starting this year as well, um, which you know will give him a little bit more responsibility, give him a little bit louder voice in the room. Um, I know that uh, he's already probably chomping at the bit to delegate some some more duties to Mike when he with the responsibilities he has now. Um, but yeah, you know Carter Carter runs our PK full time. He's a huge asset to the organization and myself. Um, we were first in the league in the PK. I think we've scored six uh, 12 goals um each of the last two years in the in on the penalty kill as well so um he's just one of those guys that knows how i operate he's not a yes man which i think is also very important this you know like we have we have heated conversations at times over um some situational stuff that we may go through and and he's a hockey guy through and through and i respect his voice and it's uh, you need that and you need that in your in, in your uh, in your office as well Carter, let's just turn to you. Was there any question in your mind that it was a, a bad decision to come back for three years or was it perhaps a, an option to flee the nest and be a, a head coach or a, a, the associate coach's role was a was a nice, if you like, fix into the next into the next run of the ladder? Yeah, I, th I think um, I was always, you know, for me still being, I still consider myself young, uh, it, obviously, uh, as far as the coaching world goes, but uh it's my seventh year coaching pro, and I know Sheffield is one of the best places to be, especially uh, like overseas in Europe. And so I didn't take that lightly, but obviously at the same time, 
Uh, I still want to take steps in, um, you know, for myself, uh, allow myself to grow. Um, you know, like Foxy mentioned, more responsibility and all that. And I, I want that as well. And this title, this job uh, title that, that came across as an opportunity was a, was a good opportunity for me to be able to stay in a place like Sheffield uh, and, and also give myself a little bit more responsibility and grow a bit and work with, uh, continue to work with Foxy, which I have for, in, in, since for seven years, um, whether as a coach or as a general manager and, uh, continue to, uh, be in a place like Sheffield where I know, um, you know, Tony and Sean and the whole ownership will give us the tools to, to compete. And that's really important because, uh, you know, not, not everywhere is like that. So, uh, there's a lot of things that went into this, but Sheffield's a great spot to be. And I know that, and, uh, we're surrounded by great people there. Um, and you know, it's been five years for me in Sheffield now. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of turned into to my home as well. A lot of coaches are very protective, aren't they? The, the head coach, they want to be very protective in their work and they, they don't delegate well. Aaron does delegate well across the board, across all, all, all the staff. And that's obviously then gives you the opportunity to breathe and become your own coach yourself. Oh, absolutely. I, I, it's That's uh, part of the reason as well. Like I said, you mentioned working with Foxy in other three years. That's that I enjoy it. And it's not... I, I have real responsibility that he gives me and he trusts me and that's huge as well. Um, and you know, that's, that's definitely goes into part of this decision for sure. Um, but you know, I think, um, I'm just looking forward to being able to work with him, Mike as well. You talk about delegating Mike has, you know, a lot of responsibilities. Us three spend six to seven days a week together in the office. And it's, you know, we, it's not, it's a lot of hard work, but we have a good time as well, and uh, we enjoy each other's company, and that was important too. So there's a, there's a lot of factors that went to this decision, but um, you know I'm I'm I'm, ha- I'm happy with the, where we're at and how we're shaping up. Aaron, it seems like five minutes ago we first spoke, and then I remember you coming into that that meeting in the office with with Sean and Tony and Mike. Um, before that that Glasgow game. But I, I checked out today, 302 games behind the bench now. Um, second only to Alec Dampier, 364. Um, 214 wins, just 13 wins shy of a club record. I mean, it's going to become an, an Aaron Fox legacy here. And and Dampier won in 96, Blaisdell won in 2001, new Grand Slammed in, in, in 2024. Do you do you feel that there's 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 more than just you're a coach, general manager of this hockey club? There's a there's a legacy that you're you're developing here. You're going to become the highest, um, you know, the most senior coach we've had, the most winningest coach that we've had. It's there is a legacy here, and, and that that's part of perhaps what you see in the future. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even stat. I, I mean, those are new stats to me, um, CMT. I, I'm obviously not focused on the past and more focused on now the future. Um, you know, we've, you know, we, we got, we got over the hump last year and, and, you know, got the goals sorted that we needed to get sorted. And we know that this league is going to be as good as it's ever been this year. You look at what some other teams are doing around the league and they are, they are loading up and, um, you know, with what we've announced currently and what is still to, to come, you know, we, we we're going to, we're going to have a great core group of guys back and, and we'll have added some new pieces as well um, to that group. And the league's going to be outstanding. And for me, it's, you know, uh, we, I want trophies, you know, the win the win totals mean, mean only a, a small part of um, that legacy, you know, it, it's the trophies. And, you know, since we've got here, there's, there's been 10 trophies available, you know, Belfast has five, we have four and Cardiff has one. And that's how I have to, to look at things and and that's what you know my goal setting is is you know it was about closing the gap to those two teams before we got here now we're we're sitting in that position where we've done that you know we've got over the hump now those teams are are, are on our heels trying to um close the gap on what we did last year and and i know that 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 they'll do a good job in in building their hockey team so that we've got to be prepared and no complacency and and be ready to go from puck drop next year are you happy, Carter, with the uh, the call that's come back? It's an impressive call we've announced, and obviously there are, there are still some more to come and, and new faces as well. And I'm sure you speak to Aaron about uh, 
you know, retaining players and then bringing new guys in as well? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, we talk, you know, Fox and I talk a lot through the summer and uh, they also meet certain names to watch, new guys and, uh, and, and, and as far as bringing the old guys back too, I think that's huge. Um, I think that we had a really good culture uh, that I think we've been building over the last five years um, as coaches in the room and all these players. And this year, obviously, if you look at how it finished, I think it all came uh, to fruition there. But um, with with how we're shaping up, I think uh, I'm, I'm thrilled with that, with how we're looking and, you know, just excited to get going and see all the familiar faces that I haven't seen in a few months and meet some of the new ones as well. And, um, you know, I can't, I can't wait to get going again. It was a, it was a fun, it was a fun team, uh, to be a part of last year. And, uh, I'm, I'm hoping for more of the same this year. When you're trying to rebuild a grand slam team or when you, you're trying to go the year after again, is it first of all, or we just bring the same guys back? Or do you actually think, well, no, actually, we, we have to make some changes. We have to make some alterations because we too have to get better because we know as we tried to chase Cardiff and Belfast, they're now coming after us, Aaron. And, then, and you do have to, if you like, say goodbye to some very familiar faces, some some friends because, you know, and especially last year, you all went through such a lot together and you have such a special bond. But it, it's hard making those changes from a winning position where perhaps it's a lot easier making the changes if you've had a bad year. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, so there's always going to be hard decisions in this business year on, year out. Um, you know, we won and you, you, sometimes you'd just like to be able to say, let's run it back with everybody. But we also know that is impossible. Some guys are going to have other opportunities, um, you know, financially. Sometimes it's just not going to work out with what you're going to have available to pay guys with what, what they might where, where they might see themselves. And then in, in this in this country, too, when you have 15, 16 imports and you've got to house them all and you have to the visas and the cars, you know, there's the apartment situation comes into play. So there's always, uh, you know, different things that that come come into this when having to make some of those hard decisions. And, um, you know, like like we've said before, like there isn't a guy that I'll, uh, I'll forget from that group from last year, like that, that'll be a, a core memory moment for me for, for my entire life. You know, every name that, that, that's on that cup and that won those trophies with us, I will remember, um, you know, but like you said, there are, you know, there are things that maybe we needed to still look at and try to find ways to get better, um, in, in certain areas. And, um, you know, some decisions are out of our hands in this in this as well, and then some of them are, are just harder decisions that we you know we have to make. Yeah, you talked about players having all their opportunities. When you're in a Grand Slam, I would imagine there's a fair few pairs of eyes look at look at yourself. Um, was there opportunities for that were offered and, and put in front of you, or were you so settled here that that was perhaps something that you you, you turned away from? Yeah, I, I take, there's phone calls I take. Um, you know what I mean? It's, I got some really good relationships in this business and in lots of different places. Um, you know, and you know, are there aspirations to play and to coach in higher, in higher leagues at some point? Yeah. You know, there, there obviously are. Um, you, you never want to just fully be in that position where your things get stagnant or, you know what I mean? But I, I don't think, you'll ever see that from me here. Um, like I said, I have two young kids that need a childhood and, um, security and schooling is, is very important. And if I'm gonna pull them out of this environment and, and put them somewhere else, it's going to have to be for an extremely high end position. Um, I'm not gonna, move parallel and go to Austria or go back to the East coast league or, you know what I mean? Go to places like that where, uh, I, it's, it's just not going to happen for, for my family. So, um, you know, we, we moved around a lot when I was, when it was just me and my wife or me and my wife and my son, but now when they're older and, and have responsibilities and schools important and, and those types of things, that's, that's just gotta be our priority. Mm-hmm. Carter, where's the main challenge come from? You uh, you study all the signings of all the teams coming in. Um, Cardiff seem to be uh, giving it a good kick of the can, as do Belfast. And 
even that little team down the road seemed to be uh, signing some pretty good um, players. Where do you see the the ch- obviously not from them, but where do you see the challenge? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be. I uh, on paper I see a lot of a lot of parity. Um, you know, if you can talk about, you can mention uh, Glasgow as well. They've they've signed some some big players, and I think every year, to be honest, I think every year the league's getting better. Uh, you know, we've been in the league five years now, and I, I it's. it's Easy, I think if you look at the standard of the league five years ago compared to what it was this season, I think it's it's uh, it's taken huge leaps, and I think um, uh, we're only going to see the same this year. Um, and you know, you you mentioned to kind of build off what Foxy said too. You mentioned about building a Grand Slam winning team. Everyone all around us is gonna is looking to get better too. So I think we have to we have to do the same. Uh, and I think I think you know you'll see that. So I don't think there's any uh, one. One uh, particular challenge, I think it's just this league, the challenge every year is consistency, and that's kind of what it comes down to. And uh, we have a lot of strong-looking teams, I guess, and in the end it's always it seems to be who could uh, be most consistent through eight months. Aaron, since we last spoke, Usler and Champini have been um, confirmed, two very important cogs in the wheel. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple core pieces, you know, different players, uh, obviously. Um, use is, is pure speed and creates problems for for teams on the outside and real good below the goal line puck possession guy. And, and Champ is is your kind of your Swiss Army knife type player that just kind of does it all, um, you know, can drive play whichever line he's on. Great on the on the power play, unreal on the PK, um, and just a one of those character guys that is a, is a glue guy in the room as well. Um, so two huge pieces. Yeah, in Coventry, uh, Carter, you're going to look across to your left hand side when you're on the bench uh, there with Aaron, and you're going to see Zach Vanell, who somebody you were close to uh, in Sheffield, uh, the super fella, did us a terrific job, and uh, decides decides he wants to get into coaching. Yeah, yeah, thrilled for him. Uh, he kind of expressed that to Foxy and I uh, near the end of the year. wasn't fully um, – I don't think he fully knew for sure what he was doing, but he, he was looking at that and for that, that opportunity to come across and him to take a jump at it. I'm, I'm stoked for him. He's uh, in Calgary as well where I am this summer, and uh, I reached out to him just congratulating him. I think we're going to get together uh, – to catch up quick, but uh, couldn't be couldn't be more thrilled for him. Um, it'll be it'll be good to see him across across the bench, and um, it'll be good to compete against him as well this year. But like you said, for us last year, awesome guy was awesome in the room. Uh, did whatever we asked of him, and um, you know, and talk about being part of that team that um, that team last year. One of those guys we'll never we'll never forget. But uh, at the end of the day, even though he's uh, he's on the blaze, absolutely. Uh, Thrilled for him and uh, wish him wish him the best. I know perhaps Aaron, it's easier when you're in a winning team, but but that position he came in to fill when you you're not playing for so long, um, a bit like Tony, I, I guess he you have to be a special kind of character. And both Tony and and Vinny were um, were outstanding in that, weren't they? They were, they were there when needed, but uh, supportive throughout the whole course. Absolutely. Um, you know, both guys really wanted to play and relish that those opportunities when we gave them to them. But when their name when their name wasn't called, like you know, you you talk to Mike a little bit. Hey, you know, how was how was Vin in the in in the gym today without without him playing? He was like high energy, great guy. You know what I mean? Just just one of those guys that was there to put the work in, was there to be a team player, was there to do what was asked for him. Um, you know, played some played some good hockey for us as a forward and as a D when we played them. Um, you know, so it was just one of those situations that we had a group that was kind of rolling hot for as long as we were. It was hard to get in without the injuries or without us, you know, using as as a rest day for guys. So, um, you know, happy happy that he found what he was looking for, um, and also really really happy Tony got that starting job in, in Germany. Yeah, just to wrap up, I know we've got names to announce. Have, have you got much work to do before you you settle with your squad, Aaron? Is there, is there, is there many you've got to find, or do you have you got quite a few pencils into those slots? Yeah, we've got um, 
we've got a, a, a bulk of the work done. There's still a few spots still that, you know, we're not finished yet with, um, which is, I, I'd say it's, it's early July here. So I'd say that's pretty normal. Um, you know, I, I, I'd say, you know, I get the text from Sean asking if there's any updates because visas, visas are, are, are a problem. And the sooner that I can get guys done, the sooner that he can have visa appointments and make sure that guys are here to, for the start of camp. Um, but you know, there's always been a, a guy or two that we found late in, in the game that, you know, has, has been a big part of, of our year. So it's, I think it's good to still have a, a couple spots here. First time we've spoken to you, uh, since the uh, CHL draw, uh, Aaron told me you got all these great connections in, um, in, uh, in Europe and the draw was going to go in our favor, but uh, Peter check and the balls didn't come out particularly kind to us, but wow, what an exciting draw and huge clubs, um, that we're going to be facing exciting times. Yeah, about as uh, tough and tough uh, the, as the opponents could be for us. Um, I think it's going to be a great measuring stick for us to see how we stack up against some of the best in Europe. Um, you know, I've talked to a couple of the guys who are coming back next year. They're all excited, I think, and looking forward to that opportunity. And um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing. It'll be it'll be good for us to see where we're at and uh, talk about a good way to get the season kick-started and up to speed. So playing against some of the best players and uh, best teams in Europe. And there's not, uh, I mean, there's not much to not be excited about there. It's exciting, exciting opportunity for the team and the club and the city and the fans who get to watch some pretty good, pretty good teams come to town as well. It is. Aaron, just to, uh, just to end, I know we've got another signing um, just after the weekend uh, that I know you're excited about, but uh when you when you when you look forward to the to the start of the year, the, when you look at your ghost roster right now, I think we're all happy if you're happy. Are you happy? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, l- like I said, you know, when 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 the when the paint dries here, you know, we'll, like we've talked about for a long time, there's a great core group of of guys coming back with the the um, that taste in their mouth of what we had last year. Some guys are super excited, you know, for the Champions League uh, opportunity. That was that may have of a, a couple guys that maybe didn't leave and that could have um, coming back. I think that was a, a selling point for them, you know. And then you know, just the opportunity to to defend and and be that team that's chased next year and and um, you know appeal to a, a lot of the guys that are are back. So. Uh, really good group coming back. And then I like what we've added up to date. Like I said, there's still a, a few pieces that we still need to get done here, but I think we're in a great spot. Okay. Aaron Carter, welcome home for one, two, three years. Uh, you've made a lot of people happy today and uh, that stability that it brings to the club is uh, most valuable. See you in August. Thanks, Simsy. Appreciate okay, it. Thanks. Thanks.